Well, here we are at Rain Robin's Garden. This is the 2009 garden. And uh, this year we've got three beds of potatoes as we've had in past years. Just finished hilling them. We started a couple years ago hilling our potatoes with hay instead of straw because somebody that we know had said that she's always had good luck with that and hasn't had any potato beetles. So that's what we do. And um, the purpose for hilling the potatoes is there's a couple of things. First of all, if the potatoes themselves see the light of day, they will turn green and that green can be poisonous. Um, and the other reason is that potatoes only grow from the point that the potato is planted up. So if you hill them, there's a chance that you'll get some more potatoes. Here we have a garden cat, Sydney, the garden cat. He's always out here protecting the garden and uh, sometimes he takes naps in the shade of the beans, which we'll see in a moment. Bye, Sydney. These are our peas. Every year we plant three types of peas. Um, what you see right here are the sugar snap peas, and so far we don't have anything coming on those. Uh, these are our snow peas, and um, yep, there you go. There's a snow pea, a beautiful, delicious snow pea. We uh, freeze the, all of the peas that we produce here. Of course, we eat them fresh. That's the best way to eat them. And then over here we have English peas. You'll notice that they're a little shorter. Um, I don't know why that is, but every year the English peas, and those are just the regular shelling peas, um, they tend to produce the fastest, the, the uh, earliest. And as you can see, we've already got quite a few peas on here. And, um, and if I back up, you'll see that there's quite a difference in climbing height uh, between the English peas the snow peas and the sugar snap peas. We usually plant two different types of each of the types of peas. So on one side we'll plant one variety of each and on the other side of the pea fence we'll plant another variety. That way we get to compare and taste test different vegetables and if one seed for whatever reason fails we can be relatively certain that we'll still have some type of a crop. These are our beans. These are our eating beans like uh, green beans. And this is the first year that we've actually done climbing beans. Um, we have here, I believe we've got three different varieties. One is uh, Fortex, and that's kind of the standard climbing bean. And then we've got, uh, I think, a Roman style bean. <clears throat> which is uh, flat. And then we've got one that I believe is going to be yellow. Now with the beans, because they will produce into the fall, what I've done is I've planted half of the garden. So if you look straight down here, you'll see that the beans are planted on the right side and not on the left. Not sure that was the smartest thing to do because when the vines that you currently see growing actually are finished. They're going to start dying off and then I'm going to have other beans coming up here. I should be planting them in the next few days. I think next year what I'll do is divide the fence in half horizontally and plant the first planting of beans which I do in the spring and then a second planting of beans that I do in early July. These beans that you see right here are hard um, dry beans. And uh, again, this year we decided that we would try to grow all of our beans, do all climbing beans, because I'll tell you what, getting down on your hands and knees and picking beans is just, can be a back-breaking task. So um, all the varieties that we selected are beans. They're not bush beans, they're climbing beans. In this garden, I have planted both sides because uh, dry beans take about 90 days, 70 to 90 days to produce and get to the point where they're dry. So it's not really something that you, you're, you're going to plant them once for the season. And I've got six different varieties, six or seven different varieties in here. The one I'm most excited about is uh, we love black beans. And I had a hard time finding a black bean that was climbing, a climber. 
but I found one that was called a Cherokee Trail of Tears, and they are kind of shaped like kidney beans, but they're black. So those will be our black, dried black beans for the year. Okay, so over here we've got some peppers, and we've got just about a whole garden of peppers. Um, I freeze peppers. So you don't have to do anything to them. You just chop them up or slice them into slices and, uh, and put them in the freezer. No need to uh, parboil or blanch them. And we've got a variety. We've got hot peppers, um, sweet peppers, and then right here we've got some eggplant. Um, have never grown eggplant before, so we'll see how that goes. Peppers need a lot of heat, so you'll see that we've got hoops here. And at the end of the garden, you'll see some cloth. And normally, this bed is covered. And the reason for that is I want to keep it warm, um, warmer. So uh, I've got it uncovered right now because there are some flowers on some of the plants. And they need to be pollinated by bees. And if it's covered, the bees can't get in there. So I take the cover off every couple of days uh, during the day, and then it goes back on. Um, right here we've got uh, summer squash, and we've planted two varieties this year. We've got um, one that's called a Romanesco, I think, or a, it's a, an Italian type of a squash. Uh, it's a zucchini that we really like, and then I also did a yellow squash this year. Um, back here, God knows why I put it there, but it's fennel, and uh, that should... should uh, hopefully start bulbing pretty soon and we'll be able to pull it out. Um, right here we've got our cucumbers and as you'll notice they only go to a certain point and then they stop and that's because I'm going to be planting seeds in here in the next um, couple of days and that will be our fall cucumbers. The cucumbers that you see planted here will primarily, they're almost all pickling cucumbers and they are primarily for making our dill pickles and our bread and butter pickles for the season.